It's very rare that Call of Duty releases a balancing update that I disagree with, and in the past they've done a really phenomenal job of understanding some of the issues that the game is facing and challenging those issues face on. And I think that's why in Season 3 I was a little disappointed to see a patch note and balancing system that didn't cater towards the problems that we're facing in Warzone in terms of balance. Now many of you have probably gone into the new Rebirth Island, or the old new Rebirth Island if you will, and discovered a lot of these problems for yourself, being melted by things like Renettis and HRM SMGs at the speed of light. Or pushing into rooms and dying to 16 proximity mines and a cluster mine that's been thrown on the floor. The only logical balancing pass that was made in Season 3 was to the Mosquito Drone, which brought a level of consistency to it that makes it fit into Warzone more than it previously did. And I think Rebirth Island in Season 3 in particular has done a really good job at accelerating and showcasing some of the fundamental flaws that Warzone has as a game in terms of balancing, and things that are going wrong in balancing that are going to frustrate lots of players, whether they're new players, old players, casuals, or extremely high KD players, these are things that I think are universal truths and something that I think a lot of people are expecting to change, but it isn't happening. So I want to talk about that in this video today. And there's a couple of things I'm going to touch on in terms of wider balance for Warzone, especially on things like the smoke meta, which has basically been a staple since Warzone 2. The first overarching change in this update was a universal change to lethals in Warzone. And I really feel like they have misunderstood the problem with lethals in Warzone and the lack of variety, which is why people only opt for a certain number of lethals, as opposed to using some of the others available to them. Call of Duty has opted to nerf across the board the frag grenades, the semtex grenades, and decided to buff the drill charge and thermobaric grenade. They also buffed the molotov grenade, thermites were left untouched, which is in turn a kind of stealth buff if you will, and they also buffed the proximity mine and the claymore. And the idea behind this is they wanted people to just use more lethals that were a little bit different. And this is where I think in lies the number one problem with Call of Duty's lethal structure. The ability to stow multiple lethals is already an issue, it's something that I've talked about extensively, and the ability to spam all of those lethals is a number one problem. But because of the ability to stow lethals and save lethals and do everything that gives you inherent benefits when you go into a gunfight, there are no drawbacks to using certain lethals. Using frag grenades and semtexes have very few drawbacks in the way of how it works. And that's a huge problem. Because I truly believe if you want people to start using alternative types of lethal grenades, the solution in my view is very clear. It's to limit the amount of them and change their effectiveness. For example, a frag grenade that you can only use once and only carry one of would be a far less attractive prospect, or a Semtex grenade that did half the damage and you could carry two. And this is something that other games have done before, and even Call of Duty has done before, that they just haven't decided to play with anymore. If Call of Duty wants people to use alternative lethals, the solution isn't making frustrating lethals that people dislike, like proximities and claymores more powerful, and the drill charges for that matter, I think many of you remember the epidemic those caused in Warzone 2. The solution is simply to play more with the lethals themselves, change the damage impact area, reduce the amount of damage they do, reduce the number of lethals you're allowed to carry if you're using a certain type of lethal. I think players would universally use more lethals across the board that were a little bit different if there were obvious trade-offs. If a frag grenade dealt really good damage but you could only use one of them, then that would be an obvious trade-off to a low damage Semtex but there's two of them. And honestly I think the biggest solution on top of reducing the number of these lethals available is also to just universally cut lethal damage by about 20-30%. to 30%. I think pretty much everybody can agree that claymores, proximity mines, frag grenades, semtexes, whatever it so happens to be, actually just do too much damage in Warzone and dictate the flow of gunfights almost entirely. I would much rather if it gave you a small advantage, say a 40-50% to 50 advantage in a gunfight, as opposed to the sheer 100% advantage you seemingly currently get. I think cluster mines, proximity mines, and claymores are the most frustrating way to die in Warzone, and I don't think anybody really enjoys their current implementation, and it's something that I think most people would agree with. So buffing them to me just seems completely backwards, especially considering we have mosquito drones, we have the cluster mine killstreak, we also now have super powerful proxies and claymores, it all just seems like we're going in the wrong direction. But I'm curious to hear your thoughts and feelings on that, so please do let me know in the comment section below what are your thoughts and feelings on the lethal situation in Warzone. 
Now, the second biggest thing that I think a lot of people are noticing, it's something I've touched on in previous videos and something that I've touched on in the Warzone space generally, and that is how hitboxes and damage is working in Warzone. At the moment, there are a number of SMGs, including the HRM in particular, which have damage hitboxes that basically mean, regardless of where you shoot your opponent, the time to kill is effectively the same. The HRM is a huge example of this, which is why it's one of the most choosed SMGs in the game right now. It is the ability to pretty much miss all of your shots or not shoot very accurately and still get a kill. And I think this is something that's becoming inherently clear in Rebirth Island, that people feel cheated out of gunfights by some of these SMGs. Because you can miss the majority of your shots when using a HRM and still win a gunfight. And I think most people would universally agree that if they get shot in the toes, they're not expecting the same amount of damage as if they were being shot in the chest. I would genuinely like to see pretty much all SMGs reworked so that the bottom half damage that they are dealing is lower than the general damage. And Call of Duty is no stranger to this kind of balancing system. Universally, Call of Duty has made it so that all SMGs do reduced headshot damage, and this is for a very obvious reason. The reason is to make sure that the time to kill when hit firing at close range isn't super high. But they've inadvertently achieved the same thing by making the time to kill the same when you shoot somebody in the toes. And I hope it's something that they universally approach and redesign the fundamentals of how these SMGs work. Now, I'm not going to touch on the Renetti because that's a weapon that's so farly obscene that it should just be completely nerfed into the floor. The next big thing for me is that I feel Call of Duty needs to really reapproach how it's looking at battle rifles, LMGs, and assault rifles. Because right now, it feels like they've got themselves in a trap where the three of them are being used interchangeably for the same purpose, and very few of them have benefits over the other in terms of how they work. Right now, the SOA Subverter is the go-to battle rifle, which is long range, but it outguns every single assault rifle. And when you have battle rifles that perform identically to assault rifles in terms of how they handle, their mobility, their general use case, you're just basically relegating assault rifles to a secondary that's never going to be used. Likewise, when you have ARs and battle rifles with really high magazine outputs, you're limiting the use cases of light machine guns. I think most players would probably universally agree that they're pretty unsatisfied with how the medium to long range meta is currently working. It feels like sniper rifles are extremely dominant and there are very few things to counter it that are actually effective. And at the same time, it feels like the counters we do end up getting feel very samey. Now, I really do feel as though the only solution to this for Call of Duty is to build bigger distinctions between the classes of weapons. Now, in an ideal world, I would have battle rifles completely removed from the game because I feel as though they're causing more problems than they're solving. But at least in the current setup of things, what they could at a basic level achieve is having LMGs be clear long range winners for extreme ranges because of their mag capacity. You could have battle rifles be really solid options for the longer to medium ranges with severe recoil control problems and then have decent long range ARs with lesser recoil problems, but with less damage output. They're kind of close to achieving that at the moment, but it's just too far off. And I feel like too many guns at the moment do the same thing and not enough distinction is made between these weapon classes. And I think at the moment between the fact that SMGs are a little bit funky, lethal seem to be in a strange place and some of these weapons just feel quite samey. We've got a very stale meta that feels very one-sided. I just don't think it's very enjoyable. There's not enough uniqueness to it and not enough creativity to it. The final thing I wanted to touch on was the smoke grenade meta, because smoke grenades are effectively essential for all kinds of rotations in Warzone at this point, and I think taking them away is pretty much impossible. I think you would really hurt the dynamic of how Warzone plays without smoke grenades. But I do feel as though we need more counters towards smoke grenades, and I also do feel as though the fundamental way of fixing that is to make it so that smoke grenades can be dispersed if they're shot at, similar to how they work in CSGO 2. I've mentioned this before and I'll mention it again, I would really like to see Warzone expand their field upgrade category to have things that can be used actively in the field, like a smoke barrage or the ability to disperse smoke by having some sort of field upgrade, whatever it so happens to be. I feel like if you want to bring more variety to tacticals and lethals within Warzone, the solution to that is offering alternative avenues for field upgrades, which can achieve similar things slightly differently. That's about it for this video today, folks. I'm really interested to hear your thoughts and feelings on the balancing in Warzone Season 3. This is something that I think is a problem overarchingly for the game that hasn't really improved, but I'm also somebody who is extremely involved in the game and very rarely get to hear the opinions and feelings of people 
who play the game a bit more casually or play the game just with mates. So I'm definitely down to hear what you guys have to say. Let me know in the comment section below. Like this video, drop a subscribe, and I'll see you again in the next one.